you have discussed this one or not discussed we have completed this lesson yet we have completed half of the portion we have completed metallurgy we have not completed because it is not coming in examination okay we will discuss uh ionic compound we have not done we have done yeah we have done ionic compounds then what we have not done so everyone uh, as you know that metals uh, generally have one or two or three electron in their atomic shell okay and non metals have four to seven either four either five either six or either seven electron in their atomic shell metals since they have one or two or three electron in their atomic shell they have uh, one or two or three electron in their atomic shell so they will lose electrons in order to complete their octet like for example if i am having sodium sodium has electron in configuration 281 so it will lose one of its electron magnesium 282 will lose two electron similarly calcium 2882 will lose two electron potassium 2881 will lose one electron similarly uh, if i'm talking to aluminum 283 will lose three electrons So we'll simply say that the number of electron lose or gain by an atom in order to attain a stable electron in configuration to the nearest normal gas, it is called its valency. And metals generally lose electrons, so they have positive valency. Okay, losing of electron means positive, gaining of electron is negative. Okay, understood? Yes, you know how? Are you there? Know how? Are you there? Talk to our parents. Okay, understood. So, uh, we will simply say that metals are those elements that has one or two or three electrons in their atomic shell. So that's. Uh, to we'll do a question here first time let me Tell me that what should be the answer for this question? Question number thirty. Oh. Question number thirty. What should be the answer for this question? Yes, you have it. What is the answer for this question? So maybe C. Yes, you, Jiana. Uh, so is it? So is it C? Yes, you, Noha. Noha, are you there? Yes, sir. What's the answer for this question? Question number thirty. Yes, you, Maha. 
Everyone, please note this question. Question number three. Everyone, please note this question in your notebook, please, fast. Note this question, fast. C. It is D, not C. C. Not C, it is D. Why? Because C is, Z is a, Z is non-metal. Yes, Z is a metal because it has two electrons. And why is non-metal? Because it has seven electrons. So, note it fast. Done. It is D. Note it down. It is D. Yes. Note this. First, memorize this statement, everyone. Everyone, it is being written. I will listen it from you fast. That these are the these are an element that generally has one or two or three electron in their outermost shell, except hydrogen and helium. They have they lose electron and form electropositive ion called cation. They have low ionization energy. Similarly, non-metal, they generally have four to seven electron in their outermost shell. They gain electrons and form electronegative ion that is called an ion. They have low electron gaming therapy. Memorize it fast. So, my dear, turn on your camera. So, my dear, are you there? In the previous class, there is some students who left the class without my information, okay, without informing me. If any one of you find today that they leave the class without, uh, if I'm saying, 
to leave, then only then you have to leave. If you if you are found here that you leave the class even five minutes before, then I will talk to your parents. No one is allowed to leave the class before the class end. Harshit? Turn on your camera. Uh, yes, sir. Did you call me? I'm saying, that, uh, have you memorized this one? And turn on your camera. Oh, yes. Done. Start start writing this one fast. In your notebook. Start writing fast. Done, noted. Harshit, are you there in the class? Yes, sir. Turn on your camera.
Saya dan Oke. Okay. Check whether if you have done some mistakes. Stop. Let's move further. Let's move further. Now, uh, as you know that uh, on the basis of their physical properties, uh, we have done this one already. But if you have not, uh, if you uh, just revise this one past, then we're going to discuss the questions on it. That metals have high melting and boiling points. There is an exception here. And what is that exception? That uh, there are some metals that have very low melting and boiling point like gallium cesium okay uh, that if you kept it on the palm it can easily melt okay similarly metals have very uh, they are generally sonorous they produce sound and striking but metals are lustrous shiny metals are uh, malleable the most malleable metal is gold okay malleability means that they can be drawn into thin sheet ductility means they can be drawn into thin wire okay and similarly, metals uh, generally metals are generally solid or uh, solid state, but there is only metal that is liquid state that is uh, at room temperature that is mercury. Okay, so just divide this one fast. Done? Yes, sir. Okay. Now we shall be going to discuss just a little. Just, I'm just going to explain a little bit. Similarly, similarly, metals are generally, uh, non metals are generally soft. They are, they are better neutral of electricity. They, know, they are generally uh, liquid. They are generally gases or solid. But there is only non metal that is uh, bromine that is liquid at room temperature. Okay. So just go through it, and if you have not done, then you can write it in your note or take the screenshot. Okay. So that uh, when we are going to discuss the question over it, you should answer this, those questions, okay, properly.
sir. Yes. Sir, Dan? no, sir, uh, doubt. Yes, I see. So isn't uh, the non-metals liquid also? Yeah, non-metal is only liquid. The only non-metal that is liquid is bromine. Otherwise, they are gases or solid. Okay. Bromine okay, is the non-metal uh, that is liquid at room temperature. And non-metals are bad conductor of heat and electricity, but graphite is the only non-metal that is good conductor of uh, heat and electricity. Okay. Yes, sir. Sorry, uh, graphite is a good conductor of electricity, not heat. And diamond is, generally non-metals are ha not hard, but diamond is very hard. Okay. This I have explained you in detail that why it is so, because of its structure. Not it fast. If you have not done, then you've done this one. Should I move to the uh, questions? Yes, sir. Because we have already done this one in the notebook. So that's why I'm just thinking that. So let's move and just deal with the question. We have the following, uh, yeah, tell me the first answer, the question for the uh, answer for the first question. Dullness, C. Dullness, we have the following property generally not shown by material dullness. Okay. Next, yes, you, Gianna. What is second? Second. So, uh, ductility. Ductility. Okay. Ductility. Next, third one. Yes, you Sumaya, what's the answer for the third one? Option D, one and four. Cause good thermal conductivity and high bending point. Yeah. Question number 17. Mercury D. Mercury HG. D iodine. Yes, Eugenia. Sir D. Non-metals are non lustrous but the only non-metal which is lustrous is iodine. Yes, you, Harshit. Sir, option C, P. P, phosphorus. No, sir, N, A, P. Yes, you, Gianna. Sir, B, sodium. Yes, question number 31. Uh, 
aluminum yes aluminum form amphoteric aluminum zinc and lead are the three metals that form amphoteric oxides okay aluminum zinc and lead question number 32 graphite b next 33 PVC, PVC, C. PVC, yes, PVC. Yes, you, Gianna. So, bromine. Bromine. Note down question number 43 in your notebook. Question number 43. Sir, yes. excess carbon, yes. why is diamond said is graphite? Yeah. Good done, everyone. Note it. A non metal X exists in two different forms that is, carbon. Carbon exists in two different forms. Let me explain you here. Carbon exists in two different forms one is graphite. In which carbon atoms are arranged in a hexagonal structures. Okay, and here in graphite, the one layer is placed over the another layer, same layer, okay, like this. Okay, so one layer is placed over the other, and each carbon atom is bonded with the other carbon atoms. Here, this carbon atom is bonded with the other, this will be bonded with three. This here, it will be bonded with some other carbon atoms like this. Along. So, every carbon atom is bonded with three other carbon atoms. As a result of which, okay, they are not, uh, means what, what it does, that one one electron of each carbon is free. Okay. And one one carbon when each of each electron is free, then what would happen? Carbon cannot, carbon cannot be stable by having a, uh, by making three bonds, it will not be stable. And it cannot make bond with this carbon atom. Why? Because this one layer is placed over the other layer and there is a large difference between the two layers. So they cannot make bond with this one, with this, with this carbon or with this carbon. They cannot make bond like this. Okay. So what carbon does here is that 
it may alternate double bonds. It may alternate double bonds. Like this carbon will make bond with this one. Then, so the four bonds of this carbon is fulfilled. Then it make like this, it make like this. This one, this, uh, this one, okay, this one, and this one. So due to alternate double bond, due to alternate double bond, the carbon is making four, four bonds. One, two, three, four. Every carbon is making four bonds because it cannot leave one electron free like this. It make alternate double bond. But when there is an alternate double bond is there, it result in delocalization of electron. Means after some, after a while, this double bond will shift to this way and here will be the single bond. Okay, means what would happen uh, after this one, the double bond will shift to this place. This place, this place, where it was single bond, now it will be, it will be double bond there. Okay, it will be double bond there. So, we'll say that when there is an alternate double bond, okay, when there is alternate double bond, the delocalization is possible and this delocalization result in, in making the graphite good conductor. Means what happened here is that if suppose there is a double bond, like there are two carbon atoms, they are bonded like this. So, as a result of which, after some time, there will be, where there is double bond, there will be single bond and where there is single bond, there will be double bond. Like this. And this process remain continued. Double bond, single bond, double bond, single bond. As a result of which, electron are delocalized. The electrons are jumping from here to here and then again back to here. So this delocalization result in in uh, in making the graphite good conductor of electricity. That's why graphite is good conductor. But in diamond, but in diamond, the all atoms are arranged in a tetrahedral structures. All atoms are arranged in tetrahedral structures like this. In a pyramidal structure. Every carbon atom is bonded with four other carbon atoms. Like this carbon will further make bond with another carbon atom. This will make a bond with another carbon atom. And this process remain continuing. They will make bond another with this like this. Okay, so this will keep keep on going process. So in diamond, every carbon atom is bonded with four other carbon atoms. So that's why no delocalization is possible here. No double bond is formed from formation taking place here. As a result of which, in tetrahedral structure, uh, the diamond is not able to conduct it. And this is a speciality of the tetrahedral structure that when the carbon atoms, carbon one carbon atom can also make bond with four other carbon atoms like this. In this pattern, if we have a square planar geometry like this, like this, they can make bond like this also. One carbon atom is bonded with four other carbon atoms. But this is not in a stable structure. Why? Because there is not equal force of uh, equal repulsion force in in every with, with every carbon atom. Like this carbon atom and this carbon atom are at 180 degrees. Uh, bond angle and and this carbon atom and this carbon atom are at 90 degree bond angle so there is not equal repulsion so what does they do they will arrange in a pattern that so that they will have equal force of repulsion okay so this is the speciality of the tetrahedral structure that in tetrahedral structure if you have a carbon single carbon atom here okay and if this carbon atom is bonded with if this carbon atom is bonded with another carbon atom, So this is the speciality of the tetrahedral structure that the bond angle between that here one will, will be one carbon, one carbon, one carbon and one carbon. And the bond angle between 
these carbon is that they have the same design. Okay, the angle between this carbon and this is 109 degree. The same between these two, 109 degree. The same between these two, 109 degree. This is backward, like a tripod, like a tripod we have. The two legs are on the screen and one leg is behind the screen. Okay, so this is uh, just a, and this is out of the screen. This is out of the screen, this is behind the screen. And these are, these two are on the same screen. So we can simply say that uh, like a tripod, they have same bond angle. This is also 109 degree. And this, uh, and the bond angle between this is also 109 degree. So when the bond angle is same, and if you apply the force on this carbon, the all of the force will be exerted on other carbon, all carbon, same carbon. If you apply the force on this carbon, the force will be distributed equally on other carbon. But suppose if it is not, if it is square planar geometry like this, in this way, the carbon atoms are arranged. So if you apply the force on this carbon, on this, then the maximum force will be exerted on this carbon. If you apply the force on the, if in this direction, the maximum force will be exerted on this carbon. So in the square planar geometry, force is not equally distributed. But in tetrahedral geometry, the force is equally distributed. That's why diamond is the hardest substance, naturally known, hardest naturally occurring substance. Okay. Understood? Yes or no? Yes, sir. So that makes the diamond. Uh, Harshit, are you there in the class? Yes, sir. I asked you to turn on your camera. Then why have you turned off your camera? So this is the speciality of uh, that is making the diamond a hardest substance. And these two forms of carbon is known as allotropes. What is allotropes? Allotropes means that existence of an element in two different forms only on the basis of arrangements of atoms. Like carbon can exist in two different forms in the form of isotopes. Carbon 12 and carbon 14. But what is the difference there? There is a difference of neutron. Carbon 14 has two extra neutrons. That's why it has 14 mass. But carbon uh, 12 has only six proton and six neutron. Sorry, due to the difference of neutron. Neutron. Not proton. Neutron. So carbon, carbon, if I'm talking about the carbon 14, Carbon 14, the neutron is carbon 14, the neutron, how many neutron are there? 8 neutron and proton are 6. But in carbon 12, there is 6 proton and 6 neutron. We about 12, 12 mass. Okay, here is 14 mass because of extra. But that these are called isotopes. What is allotropes? Allotropes are existence of same element in nature, like carbon 12 and carbon 12, all carbon 12. Atoms. But if you arrange them, that carbon-12 atoms in tetrahedral structure, it will, it will become diamond. If you arrange that uh, graphite, uh, sorry, these carbon-12 atoms in, in hexagonal structure like this way, like here, then it will become graphite. And graphite is slippery. Why graphite is slippery? Because graphite can slide over one, one layer over the other. This is the one layer and this is another layer. They are placed like a page, like a like a like a uh, like a note bundle so you can slide them like this way so when we write with the pencil the one layer of graphite can easily slide over the other sir because yeah if an element has more than like two forms then it will still be called an allotrope or only two forms is called as allotrope the two forms are called allotropes there are three forms a one form was Buckminster Florence also we will study this one in the carbon's compound chapter in more detail Okay, so here this I'm just going to give you a quick review that in graphite electrons here a each carbon atom is bonded with three other carbon atoms like this one two three and one electron is free of each carbon they make alternate double bond like here one double bond then here double bond then here double bond then as a result of which graphite is able to conduct electricity. Okay, because delocalization possible with that. And this you will learn more in detail in, in the next chapter, okay? And why in carbon, diamond is hard? Because in diamond, every carbon atom is bonded with four other carbon atoms. One, two, three, four. This carbon atom, one, two, three, four. This carbon atom, one, two, three, four. No electron is uh, free for a double bond or delocalization. 
that's why. But why diamond is hard? Because of its specialized structure. That is tetrahedral structure. Okay. Tetrahedral structure. So draw this tetrahedral structure of diamond. Why are you there? Ron? Yes, sir. Which is Jana, you also? Uh, Harshit, you also? Yes, yes sir. Draw the structure of graphite also. So do we have to draw the like a top structure only or both of them? Both the structure, top and bottom. Yeah. Yes, 
So these are the physical properties that we discussed today. And the most important thing is, uh, is, is the chemical properties of metals. And chemical properties of metals are very important. That first property is metals when react with acid, they produce salt plus hydrogen gas. But all metals do not react with acids. Those metals, because it is a displacement reaction, those metals that comes low hydrogen, low hydrogen in the reactivity series, they don't react with this, uh, with, okay? They don't, don't react. Yeah. So, Maya, are you are you having internet issue? Yes, sir. So this this was also the previous time if you keep on doing like this. So where are you living right now? Are you in Riyadh? Yes. And in Riyadh, you are having internet issue. Is there is no not five G there? Hmm? So simple, very simple that metals when react with acid typically give you salt plus hydrogen gas. Not all metals are going to react. Those metals that come blue hydrogen like like uh, mercury, silver, gold, platinum, they don't react with metals. Okay. Only the above metals react. And there, is, there I have told you in a special case of HNO3 that HNO3 do not react with metals. It reacts with metal to produce, but, but don't produce hydrogen gas. Because it itself get reduced. Uh, what, what, what happened here is that, like suppose it is HNO3. HNO3 if it is reacting with zinc, let's suppose. So if it is going to produce, it should produce that zinc nitrate, that HNO3, whole price plus uh, H2. But what it, what it does actually, it oxidizes it to water. In the H plus ions to water, nitrogen being in a strong oxidizing agent, it oxidizes to water and itself produces any nitrogen uh, get, get, uh, oxide like NO2 plus O2. Okay, so what it does, it oxidizes the water, it oxidizes the hydrogen ion to form water. Okay. So HNO3 is in a strong, but there are the two metals that can react, that can produce hydrogen gas on reaction with acid. The one is magnesium and other is magnesium. So we have also memorized this part that, that HNO3 being in a strong oxidizing agent on reaction with metals do not liberate out hydrogen gas because it oxidizes the hydrogen ions to form water. And we shall get reduced to any other nitrogen oxide such as N N N two O five N three. Understood? Yes, sir. Okay. So that's all for today. We'll meet in the next class. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Aram and Abdin be paid so that others will be also going to pay.
Yes, everyone, please turn on your camera. 